Okay, great. Let's start. A uh, few words about me. Uh, I'm a backend developer. I am recently moved to Israel from Russia. I'm learning Hebrew and uh, I continue to work remotely in Tinkoff. Tinkoff is a Russian fintech leader. It's a big company. It's a huge ecosystem. It's not only the bank, it's also insurance company, mobile, uh, investment and so on. And uh, my department is responsible for business process automation is in Tinkoff. So let's start. Let's start from the business process. What is the business process? Here it is an example of business process. Business process of beer ordering. So client enters a bar, order a beer, after that wait for a beer, and if beer ready, he pay for a beer and enjoy the beer. If he waits more than 10 minutes, uh, he just reject an order and uh, go to another bar. And now we try to implement this uh, business process using uh, some pure code without any libraries. Uh, so it's a Kotlin function which uh, order the beer and after that uh, wait in a blocking thread while beer is ready. And uh, as a result, uh, uh, we pay for a beer or reject an order. But this solution has uh, some issues. And one of the issues that if we have a lot of orders, uh, and for example, beer festival, uh, we will have a lot of blocking threads which wait and nothing uh, and do nothing. So we can provide some non-blocking API, for example, Kotlin coroutines, and uh, it solves our problem, but we still have a problem. Uh, for example, we order the beer and after that our application restarts it. Uh, I, know, I don't know what is the reason, but after that we will lose our uh, order because nobody will pay uh, for it and nobody will reject it. So we can make one more solution, uh, it will be some persistent solution. So uh, first step was uh, uh, put an order into some persistent uh, uh, storage, for example, database, and uh, make a, a record with our order ID, status and timeout date. And second component is a poller which pull our database and uh, try to handle uh, the orders which uh, was uh, ready or which were, has timeout time. So uh, it is a quite good solution, but not all the business processes as uh, simple as our business process. And uh, for business process uh, description, for specification of our business process, we can use um, BPMN. BPMN is a uh, standard developed by OMG Group. It's, uh, it's a really big topic. There are a lot of different kind of steps. I will not uh, uh, talk about it today because it's really a big topic. But here it is our business process, uh, the same business process, but using BPMN diagram. So uh, it has the same steps uh, and uh, looks very clear. Uh, but as I, I have already said, no, all the business processes uh, are such simple and uh, it is one of the examples from our real life. It is a business process from my work. So, uh, okay, uh, now we have, we got Kamunda. What is Kamunda actually? Kamunda is a, a flow engine which can execute uh, business processes. So it uh, looks very similar to our last solution. It also has a database. It also has a database uh, and some engine which uh, execute your uh, process. Also, it consists of uh, modeler where we can um, model our BPM and diagrams. Uh, a lot of REST APIs which can be used by um, admin tools, cockpit and admin, and for task uh, handling. Also, you can build uh, your own um, um, your your own solution based on this REST API. So uh, let's go uh, deeper. <laughs> uh, how can we deploy our uh, Kamunda? Uh, we can deploy it at standalone server. So what is a standalone server? It's just 
one server with its own database where we deploy our new business processes. So uh, we develop new business process and uh, put it in, on, into our server. But we use another one, another way to deploy Kamunda applications. It's so named embedded version. What it looks like, uh, we have um, Spring Boot application and uh, Kamunda is just a dependency into our model, into our application. And business processes are um, uh, deployed as uh, another code with your application, with your container. And each service has its own database, so it looks like uh, this. Uh, you have uh, three services, independent, and uh, it works like a common uh, Spring Boot application. Uh, it was a question of how we can, uh, which database we can use uh, uh, for our solution. We, we can use uh, a relational database, and it is the list of databases. We use Postgres. So uh, let's try to implement our first application using Spring Boot and Kamunda. First of all, we open Kamunda Modeler. We just uh, put our task here and uh, develop BPM and diagram. Uh, after that, look precisely into order build um, task. We assign delegate to it, and now we will implement it. How we will implement it? Uh, we create just a Spring Boot application, uh, add uh, dependencies into our Spring Boot application, dependencies to Kamunda and to Postgres, for example. Uh, after that, we implement uh, just a common component, Spring Boot component, and uh, it should implement Java Delegate. Java Delegate is interface from Kamunda API. So, and now we can implement our code right here. But actually, we uh, we, we inject uh, another component inside our delegate. So our component uh, mm, does not know about Kamunda, uh, and the uh, delegate is like a adapter uh, um, in the middle of Kamunda and real component. So we can change uh, uh, our Kamunda solution into other one uh, for uh, one day. So next, uh, we implement uh, our delegate and now we will uh, back, return back to our BPMN modeler and actually our BPMN diagram, it's just a XML. So we push XML button, take this XML and put it into our resources in our Spring Boot application. Also, we create processes XML, it's empty file. Uh, it helps Spring Boot to know that here it is uh, the processes. And uh, the final step, we add annotation to our Spring Boot application, enable process application. And okay, now we can deploy, build our application and deploy it into, into Kubernetes, for example. So we have uh, several pods of our application. Each pod has a dependency in Kamunda and uh, all these database, all these services has its uh, common uh, database. Uh, so we have uh, mm, isolated uh, microservices. We can test it like a common Spring Boot application. We can uh, monitor, we can add the metrics and so on. But it has a um, workflow engine inside it. And uh, now um, how can we manage our processes? How can we uh, look into our processes and the state of our processes? You can use uh, Kamunda provided uh, UIs, but uh, one guy from our team, he developed uh, his own solution to monitor uh, the processes. So we, it's like a web uh, um, version. You enter the rest endpoint for your application, uh, this endpoint. And now you have uh, all the opportunities to check current state. You can see runtime instances. Uh, uh, incidents, incidents which you can restore and uh, try again. 
Uh, also, you can see the tokens where your process now stay. So it is several instances of our process. One inst two instances are on the order beer and they are failed. Uh, one instance wait for a beer and uh, so on. Also, you can open some one of the in instance, for example, and check uh, how it worked. So you could uh, uh, see that uh, this instance of the process it was on the order beer step, after that uh, it was on the wait beer step, and now it is on the reject order step. So I can show you this interface, uh, but we don't have time now. Uh, I can show you after my talk. Uh, and uh, uh, last question, when you don't need a Komunda? And uh, here it is some example of solution where you don't need a Komunda. First of all, if you want to have a mm, low-code BPMS system, like IBM BPM, for example, uh, and uh, you hope to give your BPMS system to business or to analysts, and you sure that analysts will mm, build uh, your services, uh, uh, Kamunda is not for you, because Kamunda is not low-code system, you still should to code. And uh, actually, uh, I think uh, that low code system doesn't work. So uh, uh, here, uh, uh, Kamunda is solution for programmers, but uh, it is very, uh, very useful. Very, uh, and they can use it with uh, Spring Boot uh, as they like. Also, you should not use uh, Kamunda if you want some stream processing. And when you have a lot of uh, uh, data, a lot of traffic, uh, if you have uh, 10,000 uh, instances per second, new instance, Kamunda is not good solution for this task. And also if you don't have a state, so you just make, uh, without, uh, you make your process without some state um, persistent, Kamunda is also not very good for this task. So, uh, I provide some links to useful, useful links. Uh, it's a link to BPMN specification, it's linked to Kamunda.com, and uh, also a link to our interface, uh, which you can use this one. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, your questions. <laughs>